because it provides a model for identifying patients with a specific genomic signature uh, who may or may not benefit uh, from a particular type of uh, intervention is, is clearly the direction uh, that therapy is headed. Uh, the title of the, of the trial is Long-Term Follow-Up Results of EORTC 26951, a randomized phase three study on adjuvant PCV chemotherapy in anaplastic oligodendroglial tumors. Um, this, uh, this trial is presented by Dr. Uh, Professor Martin J. Vandebent from the Neuro-Oncology Unit at Erasmus University Medical Center and the Daniel Den Hood Cancer Center um, in Rotterdam, uh, and he'll present the findings of this study. Thank you. That was a nice job, but it is Hood. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor for me to be able to present tomorrow the findings of this long-term follow-up results of ERC 26951, a randomized phase 3 study on adjuvant PCV chemotherapy in anaplastic oligodendroglial tumors. And I will be presenting these data on behalf of my colleagues of the ERTC Brain Tumor Group. So approximately 15,000 patients are diagnosed in the United States of America each year with a diffuse glioma. And approximately 5 to 10 percent of these tumors are anaplastic oligodendroglial tumors. Uh, randomized controlled trials in the early 90s had shown that the optimal care of these patients was a resection as extensive as safely possible followed by um, adjuvant radiation therapy to a dosage of about 60 grade. A number of trials have tried to identify a role of systemic chemotherapy in addition to the radiation therapy, but none of these trials actually showed any benefit of, um, of that uh, combination radiation therapy plus chemotherapy. In the um, early 90s of the last century, uh, Gregory Cairncross and another sh showed in several uncontrolled phase two studies that if you treat recurrent anaplastic oligodendroglial tumors with PCV chemotherapy, you actually get a very high response rate with about 60 to 70 percent of patients responding, which is much higher uh, than what we see in, in grade four tumors in which about five to 10 percent of patients respond. Further research showed that it was a subset of patients that was actually so responsive. Patients with a specific chromosomal loss, the short arm of chromosome 1 and the long arm of chromosome 19, which is usually labeled as co-deletion of 1P19Q. If there is co-deletion of 1P19Q, you get a 90 to 100 percent response rate, and this is, occurs in approximately 50 to 60 percent of patients with anaplastic oligodendroglial tumors. Once we realized that these oligodendroglial tumors were much more sensitive to chemotherapy, the logical question was to investigate if this was a subset of patients that would benefit from the addition of PCV chemotherapy to radiation therapy. So we set out back in 1995 into a trial in which patients were randomized between radiation therapy, classical radiation therapy, 60 grays, or the same radiation therapy schedule of 60 gray followed by six cycles of adjuvant PCV chemotherapy. And these are all drugs coming from the western part of the world, uh, lomestine, um, procarbacine, and finkerstine. The primary endpoints of this study were progression-free survival and overall survival. And we enrolled in a seven-year period between 1995 and 2002, 368 patients. We are presenting tomorrow the long-term follow-up after uh, a medium of almost 12 years. It's important to realize that as of today, 24% of these patients are still alive. So we're looking at a glioma, a primary brain uh, subgroup with a considerable amount of long-term survivors. We intended with this protocol that patients that were randomized to radiation therapy alone arm would receive some kind of chemotherapy at the time of progression. And that indeed occurred. 75% of patients received in the radiation therapy arm received chemotherapy when they progressed which was, in 56% of cases, the PCV regimen. So we are comparing early chemotherapy versus delayed chemotherapy. Because of the observation of the um, explicit chemotherapy sensitivity of the 1P19Q co-leaded tumors, we amended the protocol in 2001 to introduce exploratory analysis of 1P19Q and its correlation with outcome to PCV. So this is a prospective but exploratory analysis of the 1P90Q status. We found in our study 80 patients with this co-deletion. We also tested for other relevant 
more recently identified relevant molecular markers in neuro-oncology, namely IDH uh, and MGMT. And here are the results of the intent to treat population. We reported this before in 2006 with a shorter duration at which time we only saw an increase in progression-free survival but not overall survival. If we now look at the entire data sets of all patients, we see a statistically and clinically significant increase in survival from 31 months to 42 months, which corresponds to a, a risk reduction of death of 25%. We to validate this, we did a risk adjust analysis, entering major and known clinical prognostic factors like age, extent of resection, um, the previous resection for low-grade tumors, and performance status of the patients. That risk adjusted analysis showed exactly the same risk reduction for death with uh, the treatment remaining in a uh, statistically independent factor. Of note, with the addition of PCV chemotherapy, the progression-free survival increases from 30 months to almost 24 months, nearly a doubling. When we then looked at the 1P19Q correlated population, we saw a very remarkable thing. In the 2006 analysis, we didn't so see any difference um, uh, between the patients treated with radiation therapy or radiation therapy plus PCV in the 1P19Q correlated cases. We now see a separation of the curve after six to seven years. And after this almost 12 years of follow-up, we can conclude that the uh, medium survival time in the patient's randomized radiation therapy alone is nine years and has still not been reached after almost 12 years of follow-up in the RT-PCV group. That corresponds to a risk reduction of death of 44%. In the patients without 1P90Q correlation, um, the uh, increase in overall survival we observed from 21 months to 25 months did not reach statistical significance. We looked in univariate analysis for 1P19Q, IDH, and MGMT impact on prognosis, and we found that both 1P19Q and IDH were um, independent prognostic factors. Again, it's important to realize that in the RT-PCV arm, medium survival has not yet been reached after almost 12 years. So what are we concluding today? tomorrow in this study. First of all, antifront PCV increases survival in anaplastic oligodendogloma. But the molecular analysis allowed us to identify those patients that benefit more. So this opens the venue for personalized medicine, not based on the histology of the tumor, but looking at the uh, molecular signature of those tumors. We think that other markers may further refine the patient selection. And I'm particularly referring to IDH and MGMT status, and that will require further trials, further trials to confirm this. And the EORTC has an ongoing project in which non-deleted patients are randomized to radiation therapy in various combinations with temozolomide. What I would like to further stress is that for these kind of trials in diseases which are not too frequent, we need the academic networks like the EORTC is bringing. This was a trial with 17 years of follow-up and actually a non-sponsored trial. It takes a network like the EORTC to make this kind of research possible to increase the outcome of these cancer patients. Those networks are of pivotal importance for the progress of medicine. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Thank you very much, Dr. Vandenberg.